Yetta, what if somebody's afraid to invest? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> well, I would say much everybody that invests in real estate starts afraid. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. Okay. And so we're excited that we get to invite you and welcome you to another episode of Life's Inside Track, where I'm Yetta Decker. And I'm Ken Decker. And we get to share techniques, thoughts, tips, tools, and tactics that we all need, we all deserve, you, I, everyone, so we can turn our house into home, our families thrive, and we live the best life possible. So what we're going to consider in this episode mm -hmm. is what does it take to maybe alleviate some of that fear so that we have the confidence to get started? If we want to get started, and when people say to me, you know what, I don't want to invest in real estate, I think the big question that comes up for me always is, what's that about? Like, what's the why or what's the thing behind that What's statement? the underlying? What's, what's that mm -hmm. thing that sits underneath? Maybe they just don't want to. Maybe. Yep. And often there's more there than that. Yep. And I think what happens is, for me, or, you know, I've built my confidence over the years with investing. And do I still get afraid to invest? Yeah. Sometimes it's a bigger investment than we've ever done before. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's a different type of product, you know, a different situation. Sometimes it's with new partners that I haven't partnered with before, brings a different element. But I think everybody wants to start with confidence. Can we, should we say everyone or we, should we say most everyone? Because I have met a few investors that know that's not where they're going to start. Okay. That's where they're so, going to end. And yet there is a tendency to think I should feel confident doing this thing. Otherwise, you might feel reckless. It's, right. Maybe you feel that from time to time. Yeah. If, if I'm doing something that I don't feel confident at, do you feel reckless? Like first time you drove a car, you probably weren't confident driving a car. And if you were, you probably ought not to have been, right? Like I was confident the first time I drove a car in Denmark. Somebody, a standard actually, some, one of my relatives asked me to move the car. I was 16 years old and I felt like I could do this thing. And I wrecked a fence and I smucked the car and fortunately no children were maimed because they weren't close to the car. But like it was scary. Right. And mm -hmm. I had confidence that was unfounded. Mm. So I think even at times we have confidence when, at least for me, when I ought not have confidence. Right. And so in this segment, we're going to talk about, let's, let's use the analogy of a train. Right. Okay. And there's four steps basically to get confidence or four, 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 no, not you got an engine, you got two cars, and you got a caboose. Right. And what's the caboose? The caboose is confidence. But I want the confidence first. Right. And often we think we do, and if we have it, we're delusional anyway, because okay. we can't have confidence with something we've never done. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. So confidence is the caboose. Right. What's the engine? The engine is commitment. I must what? first be committed to do the thing before I can ever hope. To build confidence. Okay, now we need to talk about commitment because, because you know, there's there's commitment and then there's commitment. Right. Do you know what I mean? I do. Because, you know, we were talking with our friend Suzanne the other day yeah. about I put on my year yearly goals year after year after year to reach a certain weight and I never reached the weight. And then mm -hmm. I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't put that on because obviously I'm not committed to that. And she said, yeah, that would be... Like me, I have a vanity weight, you know, where you see my abs and everything. and But it's tough to get there and it's really, really tough to stay there. So do I really want to put on my goal list a vanity weight or do I want to put on a healthy weight that's, you know, which is good? Right. And this relates to also income. This relates to how much investing I'm going to do. This relates to every area mm -hmm. of our life. Not just physical physicality, uh -huh. we have a thing that we really are committed to, right? And then we have so many things that we're interested in, 
Yes. And when we're interested, wanting or wanting, desiring, think it's a good idea, wishing for, yeah, then there isn't actually true commitment because what will happen and has happened, even in relation to the not or not spending until we have a certain amount accessible or not having any consumer debt or it doesn't matter what the goal is Mm -hmm. whatever the goal is the first question i always have to ask myself is am i actually committed or am i only committed until it gets uncomfortable Mm. yeah and that was that was suzanne's teaching right on when she was with life since or sorry when she came into our office for solid rock realty and did our kickoff this year she met with all our agents and the pivotal piece of her teaching was commitment is until i can't hack it no more right no 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 it's not commitment till i get hungry it's not commitment till you know i'm on the road and it's been hours and i'm and I was saving for a house, but now I need, it's an emergency. I need to eat food. Now at that level of commitment, right? right? It's not, I'm committed until I'm afraid. It's not, I'm committed until I hit an obstacle. Or someone tells me it's a bad idea. Yeah. So opposition. Opposition. Yeah. So obstacle and op- opposition are kind of different, but it's not till then. It's not till I run out of time. Right. So when is what it is when it? I run out of motivation? No. Is it when I run out of willpower? Yeah. <laughs> no. That's the thing. True commitment is commitment until it's completed. Until it's accomplished. Until I've done the thing I've set out to do, mm-hmm. regardless of what has come up against me or up against you. And I bet as you're listening to this conversation, and I want you to think back in your own memory bank of a time, and maybe it's easier to think about your partner or your spouse or one of your kids, right? Sometimes we don't want to own our stuff. It's easier to think about somebody else where they said, or you said, you were, if you're really brave, do it for yourself, that you were committed to something and yet you were committed only until it got too tough. Yeah. So my question yet is, what's the thing that brings us to that level of commitment that nothing is stopping us other than maybe our death or something, you know, like that. But the level of commitment, what sits behind that commitment? Why? Why? Why I want to do the thing. Right. Why and motive, right? Yeah, which is why. Right? Yeah. Is why not motive? Motive not why? Hmm. I st- they're, 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 they're kissing cousins. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> kissing all right. And so getting really clear on what your motive is and why that thing is so essential to accomplish. Right. And so this show is really about investing in real estate, building wealth through real estate. And you won't get there until your mindset is correct. And so commitment is the first step mm-hmm. you you got to say well why do i want to build wealth through real estate who's it for ultimately mm-hmm. and then decide whether you want to be committed to buying real estate because you don't have to no. you don't have to be committed to building wealth through real mm-hmm. estate but if you are now what's the next step let's that's be next, real about that's it. next uh, that's, that's our let's, next segment right let's get real about that yes so It's interesting. It's not until the time, even if the time runs out, doesn't mean the goal was wrong, means the timing was wrong. And we're grateful to be your partners in moving forward in this wealth, wisdom, and worth journey. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team.